Hey guys, Miles here at Tackle Hive. Today I'm coming at you with a new video series. We're gonna try this out for a couple weeks and see if you guys like it, and we'll continue it if you do. This video series is all about how to shoot your pistol accurately, and it stems from a lot of the comments and feedback we got where a lot of people know that we're releasing a video every single day, and some people are getting overwhelmed and just can't keep up, where they might be at a new shooter, beginner level, and the content we keep pushing out, they don't really understand it. So this series is going to be twice a week. We're going to release an episode on Monday, and an episode on Friday. And the idea is on Monday, we're going to give you certain, we're gonna isolate certain skill sets that will help you shoot more accurately and give you dry fire exercises so that you can start that on Monday and do that throughout the week. And on Friday, we'll give you the live fire exercises to validate the dry fire that you did throughout the week. This way, you also have a taste of how to train and how to practice properly. You don't always have to be on the range uh, sending rounds down range. So this series is going to be revolving around how to shoot a pistol accurately. And because there's so many things involved, so many details, the videos we release each week will isolate one to maybe three skill sets alone. There could be many other reasons why you might be missing or that could improve your shooting, but because sky is the limit, we really have to just kind of narrow it down. And we may not cover all or every single detail that perhaps maybe there's one detail that will help you. We might cover that the next week, but maybe this week we won't. So don't feel like if you do the exercise and you're still not shooting accurately at the end of the week that it's the end of the world. It's just that we have to take things, but you know, chunk it, layer it, and then over time you're going to get better. So for this first pilot episode of this series, we're just going to start from the beginning and kind of assume you are a new shooter or a beginner, and I'm dry here, okay, this is unloaded, but there is a magazine here. And the purpose here is, of this video, is to just teach you to get comfortable pushing out and taking an accurate shot on a target immediately, not waiting. But the key focus here in order to do that is to have a steady platform, and when you squeeze the trigger, the sights do not move. So that is what we're really gonna be honing in on. So stay tuned. So as I mentioned, the first video in the week is going to cover dry fire exercises. And we are focusing on being able to punch your pistol out, squeeze the trigger and not disturb the sights so that wherever your sights are red dot were or is, that's where your shot is going to go. Now we're not going to cover aiming. If you don't really know how to aim, I'm gonna leave a link to that up here and below in the description. So watch that video, then come back to this. Now, assuming you know how to aim, what we need to do is aim on top of our target and make sure our sights are steady, as I just mentioned. So how do we do that? The first thing we're going to do is we're not going to even be pointing or aiming or anything like that. I want you to learn how to get to the prep trigger. Okay, so the idea here, the clip notes version of this is every gun, almost every single gun, is gonna have some slack. See how this is going back and forth here? The trigger's not breaking, the shot's not breaking. It's going to now, hear this? That means the shot fired, right? So I'm gonna rack the slide, but I want you guys to learn how to just take up the slack, okay? You wanna get to the point right before your trigger breaks. So that's the very first thing. The reason why that is important is because if you shoot from all the way here without taking out the slack, there's a higher percentage that you're gonna actually move the gun before the shot actually fires, right? So then that could be a reason why your shot, let's say if I'm aiming at you, the shot actually is pulled to the left or the right, okay? So we want to focus on this, learning this wall. And so what you wanna do in order to do that, you can literally just look at your trigger your, when you're dry watching TV and just understand where that wall is and feel for it. Then once you feel that wall, you can release keeping contact with your trigger so you're not releasing your finger all the way off. Just keep your, keep contact with your trigger, release and come back to it. Release and come back to it. Release and come back to it. It's just learning the sensitivity, the pressure, the amount of pressure it takes to get to that wall without breaking the shot. You don't wanna do this, come off the trigger, come back on, and you accidentally break the shot. That means you went too far. So that's the first step, just kind of understanding this. Learning, dry fire. Okay. And when I first started shooting, I would learn to get to that wall by just watching TV, and sometimes the shot would break, that means I went too far, okay? So now, once you understand that, so you could do that a few few reps, get, get the hang of it, okay? And just make sure you can do that subconsciously. You don't wanna just do 10 reps and think that you got it. Kind of throughout the week, you're going back to this, practicing it, 
so that you know you can do it subconsciously. The next thing is now we are going to start from this position. You'll see why. In the series, we are going to continue off of, you know, with a draw and things like that. So I want you guys to marry your hands here. We're still dry. Remember, this entire video is about dry practice. You're going to get your grip as any way you learned it. We're not covering grip today, okay? So any way you learned your grip, you're going to grip your gun. I'm going to turn here. And we want proper safety habits. So this position we're gonna call compressed, ready, okay? And the idea here is you present your gun as if you were shooting a target, and then just bring your elbows in. I don't want you to do this. We're not going to use that for this series, okay? We're going to bring our elbows in this way. So my gun is still pointing down range. What I wanna do is my finger is off the trigger here, okay? I am going to begin to push out. Notice it's not coming up. I'm pushing out. I pick something on my wall or whatever it is. And what I'd like you to do right here is as I'm presenting out, pushing out, that is when my finger goes on the trigger. Okay, I'm exaggerating here. And I get to that wall. Now, I want to get to my wall before I'm fully pushed out, fully extended. Okay, so I want to get to my wall somewhere around here in midway. Okay, it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, and from here, once I'm on target, I should be in my prep trigger. And then what I'd like you to do at this point, what you need to pay attention to is your front sight or your red dot. Now that you're aimed at whatever you're shooting at, a light switch or a lamp, whatever it is, okay? I prep my trigger on the way out. Now it's prepped. I am looking at whatever I want to shoot with my pistol. I'm going to pull the trigger. And I need to notice when I pull the trigger, was there any movement in my sights? If there was any movement in my sights or my red dot, that means I'm most likely going to miss the shot, right? So what I need to do is continually do these reps. So after I take that shot, I would rack my slide and I'm going to continue to do this starting off slow so until you build the mechanics here and then pull my trigger. It doesn't have to be quickly in the beginning and pay attention. I want to be able to do this without any movement in my red dot or my sights. Now, for some of you, you're going to see that movement, okay? So one thing first is this. When you start doing this, and if you are seeing a lot of movement, I'd like you guys to really just mentally focus on moving just your trigger finger straight to the rear, okay? Just your trigger finger. There, you need to do this, really mentally focus on it because there's a lot of sympathetic movement. Everybody, when, when they're first starting to shoot, if they move their index finger, they generally move all the other fingers. And because of that, the other fingers are gonna throw your gun off when you actually break the shot. So you need to learn how to isolate, okay? So what you wanna do here is just start off with a mental note. As you're pushed out, I prep the trigger, I'm on target. I am now going to mentally tell myself, do not move anything except my trigger finger and just squeeze the trigger to the rear. Shot breaks, if nothing moved, I keep my gun out here. If nothing moved, I did a good rep. Okay, that is a good rep for me. Now I can rack the slide, do it again. So I finger off the trigger, I present, prepping the trigger on the wall, uh, on the actual target, break the shot. Did anything move? Nothing? Awesome. Now, if it did move and you already kind of mentally told yourself not to move anything else, you want to still do that, but you can also work on a few other things for some exercises here. So one thing you can do is to get a pen or a pencil and with your trigger finger, your shooting hand, you're just gonna lay it on the web of your hand. So this is representing a pencil or a pen here. And what you wanna do is you're going to try to pull your trigger and just move the trigger or the pen straight back by moving your trigger finger. If the pen or the pencil moves to the side or left or right, then you know that you're not pulling straight to the rear. And when we're talking about just isolating just the trigger finger, that is mental here. You want to really just relax and just try to, you can start off slow. If you're beginning, you don't have to shoot fast right now because you're learning, right? So what you're going to do is in order to learn to push, pull the trigger straight back, use that pen or pencil, put it on the web and just kind of push it back. Just isolating this. And then isolating the trigger is more mental in the beginning here where you're just going to go slow and realize you're just pushing it straight back pulling it straight back until the 
shop breaks. So those two things are going to be what you're going to use to correct. Now there's a lot of things. Remember, remember like as mentioned earlier in this video, there's so many things we can do. We can go down the rabbit hole, but we want to isolate certain things. So this is not to say these are the only two things you can help improve it, but these are the two things we'll be working on in this series uh, for today. So once you get the hang of it, let's say you're, you're doing this, everything, you're pulling the trigger, everything's great. Now you can speed it up. Okay, so here I will rack the slide. I would start here. I'm going to push my gun up, prep my trigger. Once I'm on target, break the shot. Did my sights move? So notice I'm not pushing out my gun and then waiting here for so long and then pulling the trigger. I want to break the shot as soon as my sights are on target and see if there's any movement. Okay, and remember the goal is not to have any movement. It can be helpful to do this on a white wall or a piece of white paper. So that will make the contrast will make it easier to see your front sight or your red dot. So if there's any movement, you know that something is off okay, and you need to improve, right? The last thing for the dry fire series for today here is after you break your shot. So notice I break the shot. I want you to come off the trigger immediately and go back to a prepped trigger. Okay, so notice here. Even though I'm dry, notice I'm going to break the shot and I do not pin it, okay? I do not want to pin it here. I want to come off of it right away and get to a prep trigger halfway, okay? Based on your trigger, you, you'll know where that prep point was. So the last thing we want to do is this, okay? The idea is we want to avoid this. If there was live ammo here, we break a shot, okay? You hear that shot break? So the slide would cycle if this was live. And what happens is when I release my trigger, you're going to hear a click. That is the reset. Okay, that means I can take another shot. What I want you guys to do is get over that bad habit. In any practical shooting application, if you hear that click, that means you are shooting too slow and you're not ready to fire the next shot. So what happens is when we do our dry fire exercises, we wanna ingrain that in ourselves already and build that into our subconscious where we break the shot and immediately get off the trigger and I'm ready to take another shot. Okay, so that should be part of your follow through where I'm here. I'm going to talk this one slowly here or do this one slowly. Finger out the trigger. I prep my trigger. I'm now on target. Break the shot. I remove, I, I release my trigger and come back onto it. Okay, come back onto the trigger, a prep trigger. Okay, so you're going to press in. Yes, the slide isn't racked because we're doing this drive, but you're building the proper habits, movements, or muscle memory, AKA uh, for your trigger finger. So that is what I'd like you to do. The, the, whole, the whole assignment here is to just get a good grip, rack your slide, and for 10 to 15 minutes, do quality reps. It doesn't matter how, how many reps you do, they have to be quality, where you need to be doing everything right. Watch the video again, start up here, finger off the trigger. As I'm pushing forward, prepping my trigger, once I'm on target, then I'm going to pay attention to my sight, pull my trigger straight to the rear, just my trigger finger is going to move, and I'm determining if there's any movement, okay? And I keep my sights here to make sure I know if there's any movement. And you'll notice if you watch the video again, I prepped my trigger again. So I broke the shot, I reset, and I prepped my trigger again. So do that for 10 to 15 minutes, and then you will be ready for the live fire exercise. So Friday, as I mentioned, is going to be where we're going to validate the dry fire. So if you dry fire at least three times this week, so Monday, Wednesday, maybe Thursday, you're going to be much better off when we hit the range. So I'll see you guys on Friday. I hope you like the content. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe.